Welcome to our first day of making our sourdough starter, either gluten-free or regular sourdough starter. So I'm going to start off making our gluten-free brown rice sourdough starter. So take your glass or plastic container, whichever you've decided to go with. And what I'd like you to do first is just to turn on your scale and measure how much your glass container weighs. It's good to have a base of this just in case later on you forget and to tear your scale or anything like that. So mine is 391 grams. So then what I like to do is just to write that weight on the bottom. Just in a, a pen, you could also put it, I have one of these, you know, glass writers, but you could also do it with a piece of tape or something, or just write it down on a, on a piece of paper somewhere. Then you're going to just tear your scale. And then you're going to add your brown rice flour. So how do you decide which flour you should use to make a sourdough starter? Well, the best gluten-free flours for a starter are whole grain organic, hopefully, flours because they have more live microorganisms and nutrients due to the intact bran and germ. So what is a whole grain? Well, a whole grain looks something like this and has an outer layer, which is fiber filled. And this is called the bran. It's full of vitamins and minerals. Then it has an inner layer called the endosperm, which is a really starchy carbohydrate layer. It has some proteins and vitamins, but not a lot. And then we have the inner germ, which is the nutrient core, which is filled with nutrients. On the other hand, we have refined grains like white rice flour, for example, which is stripped of the outer layer of bran, which is where the microorganisms live in nature. And it's also stripped of the germ, which is the nutrient packed core that the whole grains have that allow them to be a wonderful source of food for the microorganisms. So which whole grain flour is best to use? Well, I found that there are two types of flour that work really well. The first one being brown rice flour, and you'd like it to be super fine. And it is easy and reliable accessible to most people and you can actually grind it at home to a super fine powder if you can't find super fine. The second type is sorghum flour which is incredibly underused in North America but widely used throughout the world. It's easy and reliable and accessible to most people. It creates an incredibly lively starter and it has a fairly neutral flavor but is high in protein so it's a wonderful choice as well. And of course, there are a few other whole grain gluten-free flours like teff or millet, for example, which could be used, but I find them quite strong in flavor and prefer to use them to add into my leaven to flavor my dough rather than create my starter with. Ultimately, the choice is yours and whichever you choose, you'll be successful. We're going to add 30 grams of brown rice flour. So it's about two tablespoons-ish. And I'm a little bit shy. Ah, there we go. They're going to add uh, one tablespoon of pineapple juice and we'll see how much that weighs. And then we'll just fill that up to about 30 grams of water. Give it a mix, but we're most likely going to need a little bit extra water. So why are we adding the pineapple juice anyway? Well, the pineapple juice is quite acidic, and so it helps to jumpstart the bacteria and yeast activity by encouraging the good microorganisms, the ones that we want to be within our starter, to thrive. And this speeds up the process and helps avoid the growth of unwanted bacteria that can make your starter smell really gross for the first four days. I like to do just a little bit of juice. So that's going to wait about 17 grams. And then I leave that weight there because I want to try to have a one to one ratio, which is one part of flour to one part water. So I do find sometimes you need a little bit more water with certain uh, flours, certain gluten-free flours. And I'm just going to fill it up to 30 grams. Now, if you overdo it, you can just take it out. This is why sometimes People like to pre-measure their water. You don't have to be exactly, exactly. Just go nice and slow. You'd be fairly exact, but if you're like one gram over, you could always add a gram of flour too. Um, but you could also just take another container, measure your water, and then pour it in. So now I've got 30 grams of the liquid, which is my combination of 17 grams of pineapple juice 
and the rest of water. And then I'm going to mix it. So just give it a nice stir. Now you can see this is quite a thick paste. So that's a little too thick. So like I said before, I think that we will need a little bit extra water. So now with that little bit extra water, you can see that it's more like a thick paste now. That's more how we want it. It's just like this. So now that we've got that mixed up, that's it. This is such a simple, easy process and just a little bit of time each day. And within two weeks, you will have the most amazing, bubbly, beautiful, gluten-free sourdough starter. I would now recommend taking your glass writer and writing on here what it is. If you're going to be doing the experiment along with me and try doing different flours for your starter, or you might wanna just try choosing one, or if you're doing a gluten-free and a gluten-containing one, um, go ahead and write that. And I just kind of write on here the name. So I'm just going to write, we're going to name this one Betty. So this is Betty, our brown rice starter. So that, that way I don't get confused. So then we're going to take our cloth and we're going to place that on top with an elastic just to keep any little critters out. And the last thing you're going to do is just to take your elastic band and place it around here. So we're going to use an elastic band like this every day so that we can tell where our sourdough starter was and how much it has grown. So there we are. So I'm using the top of the elastic to show where my sourdough starter is currently. So here we have Betty, our brown rice sourdough starter, our brown rice gluten-free sourdough starter on its way. Now, where you store your starter for the day is going to depend on the temperature of your environment, which is obviously closely related to your climate. The ideal temperature to store your starter at is between 70 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 and 28 degrees Celsius. So if you live in a cold climate, you're going to have to try to keep your starter warm or we'll find out later that you can also feed it less. However, for now, try to snuggle your starter up like I'll show you in a moment. If you live in a warm climate, however, you're going to need to try to keep your starter cool in order to keep it within the ideal temperature range. And as we'll learn later, we can also feed it more. If you live in a cold climate like I do, place your starter in a nice warm place. Just avoid a cold countertop like this one. I'm going to place mine on a nice wooden cutting board and wrap it in some nice warm towels and keep it nice and warm and we'll check on it this evening. And if you're blessed to live in a warm climate, then your starter might get too warm. So to keep it a little cooler, you can place it on that cold counter, use cold water and cold flour to feed it and keep it in a cooler room like a basement. And have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll see you later on today when we'll check our starters again. Bye-bye.